This conference will now be recorded. Excited about this word on today, amen. I believe it's going to be an encouragement to each and every one of us if we will be hearers uh, or doers of what we hear on today. God bless you, Sister Prisca. It's in your hands. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Thank you, Apostle. Good morning to each and every person on the line this morning. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer and dive right into the word for today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name on this morning. And we just want to say thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord Father God, in our right mind and use of our limbs. We thank you, O oh God, for keeping us safe throughout the midnight hours as we slumbered and we slept in the name of Jesus. Thank you once again for bringing us through this week, Lord Father God, safe and sound, Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Father God, we repent right now of all our sins, Lord Father God, that we've committed against you in the name of Jesus, sin in our thought, in our words, and in our deeds, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the forgiveness of your son, hallelujah, for forgiving us of our sins in the name of Jesus. And Lord Father God, we thank you for the access that we have through the throne room of God by the blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus. And now, Lord Father God, as we get into the word for this morning, Lord Father God, hallelujah. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that it is you, Lord Father God, who will speak to your people in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God. Touch hearts on this morning. Renew minds on today, Lord Father God. Heal, Lord Father God, broken hearts, Lord Father God. And Lord Jesus, give understanding, Lord Father God. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning again to all those who have joined in, joined in on Morning Glory. Today is Friday, May 27th, 2022. And the scripture reads this morning, share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your help. And that scripture comes from Isaiah 58, verse 7. And the devotional reads from the heart of God. You worship me for my mercy. You sing praise songs about how it has saved you, set you free, and met you in times of need. You preach and write books about my mercy and all the many places I've shown it in my word. Whenever you're in need, you cry out to me and appeal to my merciful nature. If you were asked under oath in a courtroom, if you were aware that my heart is full of mercy, there would be ample evidence to prove your testimony that you were. My generosity of spirit, my magnanimity towards all in need is clear. Then why are so many of my people so hard of hearing when I tell them to be merciful to others? Why do so many close their hearts, not only to people who have sinned against them, but, to also, but also to those in need of help? Why do so many of my people not only hold grudges, but also ignore desperate pleas? You have a tendency to become self-absorbed and to stay within your comfort zone. But my voice will never lead you in either of those directions. When I speak, I am leading you away from your focus on yourself and out of your comfort zone. I am calling you to reflect my mercy to the world around you. I know you can reflect my mercy only when you've experienced it yourself. I am pleased to give it to you and to respond in your times of need. But I don't stop speaking once your needs are met. I am calling you upward, outward, and forward. I am lifting your perspective beyond your own circle of interest and into mine. Take it all in. See the opportunities to represent me in this world. Reflect my heart of mercy. And the prayer reads, Father, 
I'm so busy looking for direction that seems relevant that I miss your pointing me to the needs of others. Lift my eyes to see every opportunity to reflect your heart. Amen. All right. If I had a title on this morning, it would read, Gifts are not for hiding. There are several gifts that you're carrying on the inside of you that others need. Your gifts are not for hiding. Mercy. Mercy is a gift. And mercy means compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. So when someone in your life, whether you know them or not, has gone to the ultimate extreme to do you wrong, and depending on the severity of that offense, society deem you right if you retaliate. But the game changer here is when you know you could repay evil for evil, and you obey the voice of the Holy Spirit within you who says to extend mercy instead, I will repay and you comply. This is my opinion um, that mercy is a very rare gift that many, uh, many people have. Magnanimity is generosity. This is another gift that comes from God. I'd like to read a, a short poem on this morning by Frank Sonnenberg, and it reads, The Gift of Giving, since we're talking about giving on this morning. Give out of love, not obligation. Give when it's least expected. Give without strings attached. Give from your heart. Give of yourself. Give to show that you care. Give help without causing helplessness. Give something that takes personal sacrifice. Give to make a difference. Give without keeping score. Give for no reason at all. Give a little if you can't give a lot. Give without attracting attention to yourself. Give without being asked. Give of your experience. Give to those who need it most. And that was a short little poem I just wanted to read. Many a times, those who give so frequently, so often, giving is uh, their gift from God. And can probably, some of you can probably agree with me that we have oversized hearts that pump a whole lot of love, a whole lot of mercy, a whole lot of for, uh, forgiveness, and so much more. Those of you that are on the line this morning may sometimes say or feel, Lord, I give of my time, I give of my service, I give of my love, I give of my joy, I give mercy and forgiveness even when those constantly and spitefully do me wrong, but who in return is given to me? Then why are so many people of my people so hard of hearing when I tell them to do, to be merciful to others? Why do so many close their hearts, not only to those who have sinned against them, but to those in need of help? And this is what Pastor T. Green is asking. And my answer, I think that sometimes the giving people do so much for others and not everyone is appreciative of their generous hearts. And after you've done for this individual, they turn around and they do you wrong. We got to remember everyone has feelings. And just because this person gives so much of themselves doesn't mean that they can't get discouraged at some point. So perhaps some get to the point where they shut up their hearts for a season and towards others that actually and genuinely do need the help or service. Instead of releasing that person uh, or that wrong that they did to you, you hold it in and it becomes a grudge and it becomes hatred and it becomes bitterness. And you say, forget about everyone else. I'm not helping no one else because you don't want to get hurt again. Now you've made things about you, but God is speaking to you and telling you to go this way and to help this person and that individual, but you're not leaving your comfort zone. This place of comfort is where you're no longer giving to anyone. And now you don't have to worry about getting hurt again or seeing your gifts get misused or abused by man. 
But God is still saying to you, the world is in need of you. You start to throw private tantrums. You start to cry inside and asking God, Lord, what about me? I give and I give and I give and I give so much. And what do I get back in return? I get back hurt, unappreciative behavior, and ungrateful people. So much so that you find yourself trying to make things about you when it was never about you. And you try to remain in your comfort zone when that's not where you belong. Let's take it back to the Bible days. Imagine if God had no mercy for the children of Israel. We all remember that story. You remember how they complained? You remember how they murmured? Do you remember how ungrateful they were to God as much as he gave to them? He gave them manna from the sky. He was their cloud by day, giving them shade and protection. He was their fire by night. He gave them water from a rock. He gave them victory over Pharaoh and his army and continuous grace and mercy throughout their years in the wilderness experience. But if God had stopped giving, they wouldn't have made it into their promised land. The Lord has placed these gifts on the inside of you, inside of us not for ourselves, but for the world around us that is in lack and in dire need of his mercy, our forgiving hearts, our big heart filled with his love, his joy, and his peace. Give it to others because God will never place something on the inside of you that wasn't meant for you to give. What's in you has to come out. As a matter of fact, scripture says that if we give it, it will be given unto us, back unto us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall man give unto your bosom. It may not always be from man, but most certainly our Heavenly Father will see to it that you are replenished, restored, renewed, and that he gives you all you have need of to keep on going and to keep on giving and to keep on pouring out to your loved ones, to your neighbors, to your coworkers, to even strangers that comes across your path, to the ones you're around daily and to the ones who don't know the word and the love of God. The devotional says, I know you can reflect my mercy only when you've experienced it yourself. I am pleased to give it to you and to respond in your times of need. I want you all to just take this moment. Take this moment and reflect. Can you remember a time or can you remember those times when you were in desperate need for the mercy of God? You begged and you plead with God for his mercy in your life. As you're recalling those experiences on this morning, and as they resurface your mind, let them begin to soften your heart towards others that are begging and pleading for your mercy. Give to them what God has given to you. Somebody is waiting to experience the merciful hands of God in their life, but through you. So you can't stay in your comfort zone. You can't hold back and focus on self. That boy, that girl, that man or woman needs you to act right in this moment. They need something from you. But you have to be willing and in a place to give from a pure heart so that they will be able to freely receive it. When you give freely, people know. But it's the difference when you give grudgingly. People know that too. So you have to be in a place where God has healed you and that you're able to give freely because freely people will be able to receive. Whoever you are on the line this morning, that has been cuffing that gift of giving or extending God's mercy, extending God's love, 
extending God's joy and peace, extending his forgiveness or whatever it is that he gave you to give. He's speaking to you right now in this moment to let that offense go and allow him to heal you so that you can freely give again in Jesus' name. And I just want to pray on this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you once again to say thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy towards us. Lord, there are people on this line that has been tried, sinned against, and hurt. But God, that doesn't mean we should stop giving of ourselves to help others that are truly in need. So, Lord, I decree and declare that we, the people, we, the children of God, can't stop and won't stop giving to others, especially in their time of need. We repent right now in the name of Jesus if we have put our gifts on hold because we were too hurt to give it. We become too self-absorbed to deal with anyone else. We say, forgive us now, Daddy, and cleanse these hearts. Hallelujah that they may fully function to do your will again. Father God, I pray that you will restore, you will refresh, you will revive all that are constantly pouring out and giving over and beyond themselves to others, that we may continue to do the work of the Lord. I pray that we won't allow frustration to settle in and that whenever we're feeling overwhelmed to come to you and cry out to you for help, we thank you for this gift of giving, this gift of mercy, this gift of generosity, this gift of forgiveness, because you are a giving God. I thank you that we will continue to give from a pure heart from a pure stance, a pure place, that others will be able to freely receive that which you have for them. This we pray in your matchless name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah to God be the glory. The line is open for any comments. Amen. Amen, Sister Prisca. What an awesome message that you expounded on this morning, uh, talking about the mercy of God. And as you know, there's so many manifestations or ways in which we as believers, as disciples of Christ, and and one of the key things here is we're only given what has been given to us. Mercy does not initiate with us, but it initiates with what we have received through Jesus Christ. God so loved us that he gave us, even when we were yet sinners, he extended mercy to us. And, and of course, we don't get what we deserve. And so when we extend it to others, it's not coming from us, but it's coming from the spirit who dwells in us. And so imagine the warfare. You have Holy Spirit living in you. And Holy Spirit doesn't lay dormant. He doesn't lay dormant. He is active in our lives, leading and guiding us into truth. And when we resist the Holy Spirit, you know, imagine the inner conflict. And, and I think you alluded to that today. You know, we have allowed the hurts and the offenses that have come to us to bind us up. And, and Holy Spirit is, is always speaking, is always leading us into truth, leading us into a continual liberty. And um, 
you know, in which we have been made free. And so within our own selves, we wrestle uh, uh, and, and strive with Holy Spirit to release that which he has given unto us. It does not proceed or it does not, it's not initiated with us. It initiates with Jesus said those who are his disciples who live according uh, to the kingdom. Amen. They are blessed because they are merciful. And, and so that is our nature now to be kind, to be supportive, to give to those that are in need and to be quick to forgive, hallelujah, and release those who have done anything against us. Now we grow in this because it doesn't start out because our nature has been so shaped and formed. But as we yield to Holy Spirit, hallelujah, then it's no longer I that lives. It's no longer me that's that's in that comfort zone, but it's Christ who is in me that enables me to be merciful. And I like the, the words that end in F-U-L because it really means F-U-L-L, full of generosity full of kindness, full of works. And for the believer, it's these acts of mercy that we're going to be judged on. We won't be, when we go to the judgment seat, it's not going to be for sin, but it's going to be for those acts of compassion and generosity and what has been given unto us that we can freely give away. So God bless you this morning. This, this again is one of these messages that just goes to the core of us. And we have to examine and see, Lord, where have I withheld? Because like the commentary said, a lot of times you know, we're self-indulging and we go there because people have pushed our buttons, but nobody should push us into a place that we are, or back into a place that God has delivered us from. So it's a yielding to Holy Spirit. It's a yielding to Holy Spirit. And, and once we can break through, because I can remember, you know, I, man, there were some things that mm -mm, I'm, I'm not letting them go. I'm not. But, but when I allowed Holy Spirit to soften my heart and look beyond their faults and see their need for his love and compassion that is going to be demonstrated through me. Then when I tell you the weight that came off of me to, to, to hold back love, to hold back resistance, to hold back, you know, on caring and giving what we have been so graciously given from Christ is weighty. It's a burden. But once we can release that and let him work through us. Hallelujah, then we can give tangibly and we can give spiritually because there's a spiritual mercy and then there's a tangible or, or works of mercy. And we need to be able to do it all. This is what's going to uh, 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 allow love. We see all the hatred and we can talk about the hatred and the meanness and all of that that's going on. But when we start acting merciful, amen, we can eradicate a lot of that. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Sister Prisca, this morning. Anyone else? Good morning, Sister Prisca. What an awesome message. I can certainly, certainly relate to this devotional because I, I, I consider myself to be a giver. 
And um, <clears throat> I've cried out many times to God, Lord, why has this happened? I'm this, I'm that, you know, I give, I do this, I do that. And sometimes I would have hold a grudge. And then at the same time, God would have spoken to me and I would have had to um, release it, but not, not right away because I was angry. But um, what you said is so true. God re replenishes, renews, and just refreshes us. And, and we get angry sometimes when we give and persons are unappreciative. Um, I, I have a girlfriend and she says to me, she says, Thurston, you have a bleeding heart. You said you're not going to do, but you still end up doing. So, you know, we laugh at each other because she said, oh, I know you're still going to do, even though you said you're, you're angry and you're not going to do. You just have a bleeding heart. But I, I thank God for this message because this is so true. God needs us in the world to, to do his will and to do his work and to be givers and to help people. And once we have this gift, he wants us to be able to use it. So this was a blessing to me and this is so true. And I thank God for the message. Good morning, family. How is everyone? Um, Sister Prisca, this was an awesome message on this morning. Thank you for traveling mercies. However, there were problems I didn't arrive on Wednesday, I arrived yesterday because I was roaded out to New York only to come back to FLLL and turbulence in North Carolina. But I stood up and I just thought of everything Apostle Gaines said and her husband and Lady Shandon and Pastor Fox. I stood on that plane and I prayed and I cried. Everyone just looked at me and I said, God, you are God of order. Allow me to be in order right now. And I prayed, oh my God, everything just stopped. I cried. And as I was praying, I saw all of you guys over me. And I'm so sorry. I love you guys. Thank you for continuing praying for me. Thank you. Everything you said about the blemishes being refreshed, I've never felt so renewed. I've never felt so refreshed. Apostle, my husband welcomed me with open arms. I'm happy again. And I told my mom, I love you from a distance. I will not come here unless God tells me. Thank you. My father is healed. I have no coming back to Florida unless I have to. Well, I have attorneys I have to see for my fall. I love you guys. I do. And Sophia, thank you. Thank you. I remember everything you said. God bless you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, it was an awesome, awesome, awesome word, Sister Prisca. Especially when we saying that we have to show mercy toward towards others and everything. And sometimes you will be you will be challenged. You will be challenged. You know, and I have learned personally through your challenges and everything. That's why it's so important to hold on to the hands of the Lord, because he is he is the only one going to guide you and lead you to show that mercy. And I personally think about, you know, um, I always say to myself, you know what, whatever has happened. Uh, Whatever individual have done or said, I cannot let that situation stop me from entering eternal life. You know, grudges, unforgiveness, hatred, strife, all those things. How do you think your heavenly father going to receive you if you showing those acts towards others when he have everything that we have done and we have done some things i could just talk about me and i just be thinking god like lord how you just still open your hands to show me mercy how you just continue to extend your extended grace time after time after time and you still find me not guilty on every on every case you say shandon not guilty shandon not guilty Shandon, I extend my grace and my mercy, you know. So we have to ask, sometimes we've been, yes, been broken, been hurt, been rejected, all these type of things. And it will be 
a hard place to show mercy and forgiveness. But you have to ask Holy Spirit to turn a stony heart to flesh because now God is able to go in and mold that heart that you will be able to show mercy to, towards the individual. You will be able to show grace and send more grace for that individual. Because I say to myself, ain't nobody's situation going to send me to hell. So that's what keeps me grounded. Once again, um, Sister Fresco, awesome word. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Sister Prisca. Good morning, Apostle Gaines. Good morning, everyone on the line. Um, this is very good because when in this area, the scripture comes to mind to be not weary and well, well doing <laughs> because I'll reap in due season if I faint not. And sometimes the things that we go through, you just want to fall out and faint because it's unbelievable sometimes what people will do when you open your heart to help and they do a, they flip. But God is faithful to do all that he says he will do. And like uh, Lady Shandon said, he comes back to us and reminds us how merciful he is towards us when we've done wrong. And he, every day his mercies are new for us. His compassion for us, it fails not. So uh, he just reminds me that of his love for me and to have that same love for others. And because the love of God has been shed abroad by the Holy Spirit in our hearts, if we allow that love to uh, go before us, even when we're hurting, and it hurts because when you love hard and and that love is taken for granted, it hurts. It hurts. But I thank God that he is God and he is a God of love. And he teaches us every day. And I think that the depths of love uh, get deeper and deeper as we walk with him, as we look through his eyes and feel with his heart. Thank you so much, Sister Prisca. Praise the Lord. Are there others? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my God, just a quick get out word was so on time. And that word was so awesome. So awesome. And as I listen to the you know, the different people that came in and says what they said, it's like I'm speaking, I'm just hearing myself. But um <laughs> I'm in the same boat, you know. I'm after half the Lord, sometimes I say, God, why I'm the one that's always giving, always lending, always dear, always compassionate. And it's like what you're giving, it's not receive with a thankful heart. Or, you know, you don't have someone that you can call upon when you are in need. You know, you're the one that's always giving. And then the people just... You know, the people you give to is like they just take, like you hold them something with no gratitude, you know. And <laughs> I remember saying that to the Lord about two days ago. I said, God, why is me that is always in this place of giving, giving and never receiving, you know? And the Lord said, didn't you say you want to be like me? And so I, I just chuckle at it, you know, because. This is how God is. He constantly gives. He's constantly merciful, kind, compassionate. And he does not stop because we do not respond the way we should. You know, he continues to give. And if we're going to be like him and, you know, to those that are always given and never receive. And never receiving is that God gave us that bowl of compassion. God calls us to be that way because not everybody's like that. More people are takers than givers. And so if we are the one that is always giving, you know, always giving out of ourselves, and then we are complaining, guess what? God is replenish, replenishing us. He is refreshing us. He gave us that gift. He mm -hmm. gave us that anointing. And it's who we are. And even when we get 
burn when we get bite and we're saying, I'm not going to do this again. We can always say that. But as <laughs> soon as there is a need, we're the first one that jumps in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're the first one. Because I say it every single day. I'm not going to do this again. Nobody's going to come to me and ask me for so-and-so. Nobody. And as soon as I hear some, oh, I, I will help. Sometimes you just jump in it and start doing, start helping, mm -hmm. start giving without even recognize it. Because it's who we are. It's our nature. If you want to be more like Christ, you know, God, God, God anoints you that way to respond. Mm -hmm. You're a giver. You're not a taker. So, you know, we just have to look at it like, God, this is the way you designed me. And this is who I am. So we just do it and just, you know, look at the Lord. We can't look back to those that we have blessed, those we have That's done things it. good to, you know, because they don't see. They think that they're entitled. And all they are doing, they're just takers, takers. And it's not going to change because that's who they are. Just like they're takers, we're the givers. And so we just have to look to God to replenish us. And guess what? God will never leave us empty or void. We will always have to give. We will have always have that bowel of compassion and merciful because it's who God created us to be. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Ooh, that is so true. Um, okay, uh, there's a scripture just on that that you spoke. I think it's in, I think it's, Okay, Luke 6, Luke 6 and um, verse 30, okay, Luke 6 beginning at verse 34, let me pull this up, because just on the basis of what you said, okay, where's my Bible, Luke 6, my Lord. What did I say? 34? Okay. Okay, let's go back, I think. Look what he's, okay. Let's start at 30. And look what the word says here. It says, first of all, give to every man that asketh of you, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them, or do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thanks have you? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thanks have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thanks have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. This is the principle here. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your father also is merciful. And, and um, you know, this is, you know, because we say it, we look at those that, that we give. We have to get to where we're giving and not expecting from the ones we give to. God is the one who will always reward us. Again, he's given us the gift to give. And he is the one that will reward us for being his example in the earth. Remember, we're his hands extended. We're his mouth. We're his feet. It is no longer I. 
And so as we're growing in this grace and knowledge, we can release to those, and, and we may even in our own mind say that they're not worthy, but that's not how God sees it when we have opportunity. And so to safeguard myself, when I'm asked, there are some things that I'll just readily give to. And then there are others that when, when I'm asked, I ask the Lord. I then go to the Lord. What would you have me to do with this? How would you have me to respond to this? And then that way we're protected from uh, those feelings or, or, or um, you know, having a certain uh, way of thinking or attitude toward a person or a thing. We're protected in that. When, when, and, and many of you on here are givers and you never fail to give if we ever ask. Okay. And, and so don't look at who is not giving to you or who's not returning into you or who's not many times our, uh, opportunities to give can be a test from the Lord. There's a test of our heart. And so we want to give, as the scripture says, knowing that it is of God that we're going to be rewarded. When we extend mercy, he is merciful to us. Uh, Elder Rosa, his mercies, the word says, his mercies are new every morning toward us. So we're not going off of what, what, he did. We have the testimony that he ministered to us, that he gave to us, that he brought us out yesterday or last week. But today his mercies are new and we don't yet even know what we may have need for, but he knows. So we as believers, look what he says here. He says, those that are sinners, they go through the same thing. They go through the same thing. But we, hallelujah, are in a different position. We are sons and daughters of Christ. And watch this. If the Lord is our shepherd, we don't want for anything. If God is our father, we need for nothing. Hallelujah. Because he said he would supply all of our needs. And so a lot of times we have to take our eyes and our heart off of, off of well, we got to get out of flesh and, and, and walk in the spirit. And I get it. We're in this world and we still have to, I get all that. But the Lord is raising us up to another place. He's taking us to another place. Amen. Because there is a work to be done. And our acts of mercy without who's going to give back to me or, or God, you have me given and given and given to this same person. And they're not thankful. They're not appreciative. They don't open their mouth and say thank you or anything. And, and, and saints of God, Trust me, we're, we're living in a society where every person thinks they're entitled, that they don't have to say thank you, but that is not our testimony. That is not who we are. So let's guard ourselves, guard our heart, because out of it flow the issues of life and giving, giving, God so loved that he gave. Giving is a test, not only of our discipleship, but as someone said, the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. So let's look to the word of God. Let's line ourselves up with the word of God and, and let his word rule in our hearts so that we can just God ain't going to put on us any more than we can bear, and we can never outgive him. We can never outgive him. So let's just keep on giving, and let's do it with joy.
Let's do it with joy, hallelujah. Not with grief, not with grudge, not, oh, here they go again. <laughs> no, let's give because God has blessed us and put us in a position that we can answer to every need. God bless you this morning. Anybody else? Apostle, I just have to, I just have to, uh, I was laughing. I had to, I had to mute myself because I started laughing <laughs> when you said, oh, here we go again. <laughs> we go. Uh -huh. And I, I think about, uh, 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 I think a, a prophetess Busey and Sister Nicole, how they, they are just, they're just like me in certain ways. And my daughter, she laughed at me. I said, I'm not going to do that again. She said, Mama, yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you yes. are, because that's just me. That's just me. I said, I'll never do it again. She said, yes, you are. Yes, you are. But I've thought about a song that Babby Mason does. It says, show me how to love. And the song says, show me how to love in the, in the true meaning of what it is. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. I want to be more and more like you, living my life like you more and more each day. I want to become more and more like you. Show me how to love. And the Holy Spirit has to show us how to love. Yes. Because in a world where people can be so just, it's just, it's, you just have to look and say, well, God, well, did you come from earth? Where you came from? Mm -hmm. God says that one right there, that one right there. Even working with children, I was thinking about sometimes we look back to get back what we gave. Sometimes when I'm in that class and I'm, I'm praying and I'm doing things with children, I can give those little, those little fellas, those little girls a sticker. And this one little particular boy, he a, he a little, he a piece of work. He, I'll give him, he'll get stickers and he'll come back and stick one on my arm. And he'll look at me with those big old eyes. <laughs> so you know what? I'm just done for. Go sit down somewhere. But I'm going to say, Miss Neely, you the best teacher ever. That's my reward because yes. the thing that I do, it seems like you want to just take these parents and take them outside and with a belt in the backyard. And it's like, come on now, help us. And when their babies come, their parents may not say it, but those children say it back to me. What you're doing, what you're doing for me, Miss Lita, Miss Labriola, Miss Tarver, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. The grandmama that I don't have, you're my grandma. The mom mm -hmm. that's not there for me, you're there for me. And that there is no amount of money, no amount of gifts that could replace that right there. If they draw me a picture and say, this is yes. for you, I did this for you, I keep it. Because yes. when I look back at it, God is saying, see what a difference you're making in their lives. When I mm -hmm. look back, even though you flip, you know, like my mother in the Lord says, what I've done is either going to be a testimony for you <laughs> or a testimony against you when you stand before God. He told me to do something in your life and how you responded to what I did when you see him. And even the Bible says you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. I let God I've learned to let God vindicate me, you know, Amen. even when I'm hurting. Even when I'm hurting, I try to keep my mind, trying to real good to keep my mouth shut. But if you mm -hmm. keep coming at me and asking me, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. know that the way you did that wasn't right. And I, I believe we have the liberty to let people know you hurt me. Yes. And I don't like what you did. I don't hate yes. you. And if, if you came, I tell people, if you came and you hurt me for a glass of water, I'm going to give it to you. If you're hungry and you come to my door, I'm going to give it to you. But that what you've done was not right. And you need to know you need to stop. Amen. And 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 Elder Rose, that is mercy, that is mercy extended. Because a lot of times mercy is just related to what we can do, generosity and that. But spiritual mercy, spiritual mercy is telling people the truth. I, I love when Pastor Gaines blesses and releases whenever he gives the benediction. And one of the things he says is, may we respond to every situation with the fruit of the spirit. And, and so telling people the truth 
and showing them the errors of their way and and etc that's an act of mercy if you see someone going over the edge and and you got a rope in your hand you know that is able to shield and pull them back you mean you're going to stand with the rope and not extend because they're blind and can't see that they're going over the edge so no we uh, again look at our positions here in the earth and and again i'm gonna say because i'm i'm not sometimes i get poked and and pricked and and i realize you know what you still flesh you still have places where you hurt and you curl up and you cry but i don't stay long in those positions hallelujah i let holy spirit minister to me and get up and move people have done and said some nasty things you know and if i stay always rehearsing that and always remembering and if they i had my own uncle to molest me and it was my uncle that i took care of until he gave his last breath if I had held and and begr I couldn't have gone into his home and 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 cared for him and bathed him and did all of that. But no, the love of God looked beyond sword that look here. He was a sinner who needed to be saved. And what he did was an act of his sinfulness and all sin. <laughs> all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So why do I hold him? Why do I hold him in contempt? Why do I withhold from him when the same mercy that I received, he can receive it? So God used me in that said that broke a lot of that stuff of retaliation and withholding and all of that. Having to do that act after salvation. I couldn't have done it before I got saved, but it was after salvation. And then God let me be there with him to usher him into eternity. And I know he was saved. And there was repentance on his part. So we 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 don't know. We we don't know what positions. So we just do like the Bible says. We just do like when we come across the word of God, we just do. I give without expecting to receive, especially from the one I give to. That little boy that came to you, that was God responding to how you treat his children. And he used a child to do it. What we can learn from children. Amen, amen. I just wanna interject, um, Sister Rosemary, as you said, you know, and, 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 and Apostle Gaines, that <laughs> many times, you know, after we do good and we keep on doing good, we keep on showing mercy, we keep on showing love. And when we said, I'm never going to do this again, guess what? We can't help it because, you know, God has made us can do it. We new creatures. You know? yeah. yeah. We are can do it of his grace, his love, his mercy, his kindness. We are the distribution center. That's and it. We distribute this. And guess what? God is the one that gave it back to us. That's why those that we constantly give to, most of the time, they are jealous of us because they wonder, why is it that you always have this to give? My you always Lord. have love to give. You always have the grace. Don't care how you said you're not going to do it again. And then they look at your life and there is a grudge. There is a, a, a jealousy of you. And yes. say, you're always blessed. You always have. You always. Why? Because God is give. you are the distribution center. So God is giving you what you need to give out. Because most of them, God. God, most of them can't go to God and get it. But because God is so gracious, so merciful, he's going to give it to somebody that, you know, I can get it to you because I can get it through you. Mm. You see? Oh, he will give it, he will get it to you, that grace, that love, that mercy, you know, everything that you need to give out 
because yeah. they know that you're going to come to you for it. So I yeah. trust you that when I give it to you, you're going to give it back and you're not going to yeah. hold the grudges. Amen. With yeah. our flesh will rise up and want to take the, you know, you know, I can't understand why this person you're feeding them, they're biting your finger, but you're constantly feeding because you can't help doing it because you're a distribution center. You're a conduit mm. of God, love, grace, mercy. Mighty and God. Come on and now. You, know, you are the warehouse. So, you know, he, he comes and he pours into you because, you know, those are the ones that are coming to take it from you. You know, so you can't mm -hmm. look at them because they're still in their sin nature. They're still in that, you know, and, and yes. most of the time when you look at them, you realize that that's, these are the people that they have a hatred, a animosity, a jealousy towards you because they yes. can't understand why you are always in that position to give, why you're always done. Some of them, we call you an idiot, mm -hmm. you know. But we mm -hmm. have to be for God because that's the same way. God keep giving, he keep giving, he keep loving, he keep embracing us. And we come and we take it. And sometimes we never turn back and say, thank you until we need it again. God. I, I always go back and I said to people, like when we have a calamity in, 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 the, in the world, everybody's wondering, where was God when this was happening? Oh, I God. said to myself, were you looking for him before this happened? You weren't yeah. looking for him. Before this happened, when a calamity happened, everybody's going to say, where was God? He was right where he was. But because okay, of all his and, his mind, mm -hmm. and you were not looking for him before the calamity. But as soon as the calamity, you want to know where mm -hmm. he was. Mm -hmm. God, this morning. My Lord, my Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I am the distribution center. Powerful. Oh, Amen. <laughs> Really, oh. really, really good. Um, Priska, devotion was really, really good. All of the comments. Oh, my God. And I just wanted to share something really quickly. And, you know, sometimes with mercy, well, for me, let me talk about me. It seems like the pettiest things or the simplest things. Well, you know, for me, it was an act of mercy. The other day, um, there's this person that I work with, and they're higher up in administration. And, you know, I, I wasn't there, and so I can't say... But this person just, you know, just really shady. And I know this person has said things about me that's not right. I wasn't there, but I just know. So, you know, and the other day I was riding in the car. Holy yeah. Spirit just say, send this person a, a I appreciate you message and thank you for everything. I'm like, what? God, you want me to think this is the same person? Just out of nowhere. So, and the Holy Spirit told me what exactly to put in the text. And so I typed the text up. And even before I hit send, I'm like, you sure you want me to send this? And a lot of times while we or I sometimes don't extend that mercy because like most of you said, we look at, oh, how people going to look at us? How they, all those things going through my head and all these people like send that text. So I sent the text where I'm like, well, I see And now I'm going to look so crazy. Probably think I'm sucking up because I know how they are or whatever. So I sent the message and I'm waiting to receive something in return. So I'm waiting to receive, well, you know, another message, like I said. And the person on the on the heart of the message, I'm like, see God, I told you, they ain't gonna give that what I <laughs> what I said. They just hearted the message. They didn't say no words, they didn't say anything. The days behind they didn't say anything. But you know, and I just like God, why would you have like why? And based on the line, it just even brought even more confirmation. Showing mercy. We don't know what that person needed at that moment, but mercy could be in the simplest things. And sometimes me, we even fight against those small things. But even in that, for me, that was a lesson. So um, thank you, Priska, and the comments are amazing. Amen. 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 And I just want to share this here, too. I know um, my husband and I and my family, you know, something was done openly that, like, the whole world knew about it and everything. And what God had to happen is that we showed the mercy and love of God to that individual openly with no attachments, not looking for no pats on the back or whatever, not looking for none of that there. Most definitely I could just say Shandon, you know, and the, because then that's what God does. You know, he shows us openly mercy and extended grace every day. And when you, especially us as leaders, and when we can show that open mercy 
and openly mercy and grace towards <laughs> others that really has, you know, slammed at you and did all these things to you, harmful things that guess what? They did it so bad that everybody's talking about it. But the love in you, the love in you that God has put in your heart, it will have you to overlook and over uh, overlook everything that that individual uh, person has done or said about you, because you honestly have the true heart of God that lives in you, and His mercy and grace lives in you. That's why it won't be. It's not so hard to extend that grace to extend your mercy, to openly show love and forgiveness to a person that has mm -hmm. said so many rude things to you, so many rude things to you. And believe it or not, when you show that open love and grace and mercy towards somebody, especially when other individuals know what that individual done to you, guess what you're doing with for somebody else? You showing that person that there is a such thing as love and forgiveness and mm -hmm. mercy and grace because what you openly done. So, you know, it, 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 it's beautiful when you are really able to show the love of Christ through you with somebody else, you know, um, and it just, and it helps heal, it helps heal other individuals. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're at the top of the hour, a little bit over. Uh, last call, if someone wants to say it, we're going to turn it back over to Sister Prisca to close us out. Apostle, I just want to say you get revelation on, on the prayer line because I'm like, oh, that's what it is. I'm a distribution center. I now understand why. Mm -hmm. God for this word. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Good morning. I you all up. Um, thank you, um, Sister Priscilla. That was an awesome word this morning and as i listen to all the comments and 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 testimonies um i i hear the voice of god saying to whom much is given um much more is required uh -huh. and you know when we think about the mercies and and, and the love of god and, and in our lives and, and and what he's given to us uh we in the body of christ we have to um take heed to that and and I, I remember something that um pastor Gaines said a couple years ago um we were having a conversation and he said we have to look at people through the eyes of christ absolutely not not not, not through um george eyes <laughs> You know, because sometimes when we when we look through our eyes, we can see all the faults. We can see this. We can see that. But when we look through people, when we look at people through the eyes of Christ with love and compassion, then we can are uh, able to extend the same love and compassion that mm -hmm. God has given to us. Uh, awesome message. Uh, thank you. Amen. Amen. Amen, Deacon George. One more scripture I want to leave with us on this. First Peter 2, 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. God bless you this morning, Sister Prisca. Amen, amen, amen. So God be all the glory on this morning for all who has chimed in. I enjoyed today's devotion. Um, um, Brother George uh, just said the scripture that I was going to close with. Yes, sir. 
much is given, much is definitely required. And I would like to just say, um, you know, Apostle, this was definitely a devotion that I could uh, relate to. I was in my feelings, you know, teary-eyed at some point, and I was like, oh, you know, just felt like screaming at some point to the top of my lungs because, you know, um, giving is actually a beautiful gift from God. Um, but as we all heard from one another this morning, that there are times that we do dis get discouraged. You know, there are times that we do get hurt from others. But God promises that as you give, he's going to give unto you even greater. Amen. So like I said in my devotion earlier, you know, just um, continue to give because when you look to Christ, um, look unto the hill from what's coming to your help. He's going to be the one, the one to replenish you. He's going to be the one to renew you and refresh you and restore you in everything that you have need of. He's going to give unto you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again. Hallelujah. Thank you for all the givers on the line. And thank you for the takers, because without them, we would have no need of giving. So thank you that we're able to give what you have given to us. Love, mercy, joy, peace, happiness, so on and so forth. There are so many gifts of giving in the body of Christ. And Father, I pray that when we get discouraged and when we feel down and when we get offended and hurt, Father God, that we will turn to you, hallelujah, that you may pour back into us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your strength on this morning. We thank you, Lord Father, for your arms of comfort on this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you that you're using us, Lord Father God to reach the world, to reach others around us that are in dire need of what you have to give them. We thank you for your son, Jesus, the greatest gift of all that you have given, who you have given to us, to the world. And Father, I pray that as agents here in this world, that we continue to give, Lord Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And as we depart from this line, hallelujah, to go about our, our day, Please dispatch angels, Lord Father God, to go before us to come against any seen and unforeseen accidents or any danger of any kind, Lord Father God. I cover each and every person now, their loved ones, their family, hallelujah, their co-workers in the blood of the Lamb, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Cover their territory, their neighborhood, wherever they may be on today, the supermarket, the grocery store, the laundromat cover them in the blood of the lamb because we know that there's a, a murdering spirit running rampant in the earth but god i thank you that you pro promised us that you will protect us from danger from harm and from evil father we trust in you hallelujah father we thank you for the anointing that resides in our life to destroy every yoke hallelujah of darkness and of bondage in the name of jesus Give us traveling grace and mercy as we go to and from our destinations, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, that you are doing, and that you're going to continue to do in each and every one of our lives. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It's in Jesus' wonderful, mighty, undefeated, and matchless name. We pray amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Prisca. Blessings upon your day and each and every one of you today. So, Holy Spirit, direct us today to perform an act of mercy to someone that you're choosing. We'll be sensitive to hear and obedient to do what you have called us to do in Jesus' name. Go in the power of his spirit today, and the Lord willing, we'll all meet back here tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. God bless you.